All right, all right. It's the David Washington Show. I'm David Washington. Let's get right to it. We're going to talk about President Obama's recent comments to men in general, but more specifically, young black men while visiting the Harris Walls campaign headquarters in Pennsylvania. Let's get to it. Let's go. I've been going ahead and just say some, take some proofs that you don't like. <laughs> because my understanding, based on reports I'm getting from campaigns and communities, is that um, we have not yet seen the same kinds of energy and turnout in all quarters of our neighborhoods and communities as we saw when I was running. Now, I also want to say that that seems to be more pronounced than the brothers. So if you don't mind, just for a second, I'm going to speak to the all right and say that when you have a choice that is this clear, when on the one hand you have somebody who grew up like you, knows you, went to college with you, understands the struggles and pain and joy that comes from those experiences. Who's had to work harder and do more and overcome and achieves the second highest office in the land and is putting forward concrete proposals to directly address the things that are vital in our neighborhoods and our communities, from housing to making sure that our, our, our mothers and our fathers and grandparents can afford medicine and, and making sure that we are dealing with prices that are too high and rents that are too high and, and are committed to is committed to making sure that we maintain the affordable care act so everybody's got help and cares about things like education and entrepreneurship in our neighborhoods and that's on one side and on the other side you have someone who has consistently shown disregard not just for the communities but for you as a person and you're thinking about sitting out. <laughs> but, you know, because of <laughs> And you're coming up with all kinds of reasons and excuses. I've got a problem with it. Because, because part of it makes me think, I'm speaking to men directly, part of it makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. Mm -hmm. And you're coming up with other alternatives and other reasons for it. And I think anybody you are talking to in a barbershop, anybody you are talking to in your house, in your family, at a, at a, at a church, who is coming with that kind of attitude, I think you have to ask them, well, how can that be? Because the women in our lives have been in our backs this entire time. They've been raising us and working and having our backs. And when we get in trouble, the system's not working for us. They're the ones who are out there marching and protesting. And so now you're thinking about sitting out or even supporting somebody who has a history of denigrating you because you think that's a, a sign of strength, because that's what being a man is, putting women down. That's not acceptable. That's not it. This shouldn't even be a question. Wow. So there it is, everyone. There it is. Um, <laughs> it it kind of reminded me uh, of my dad lecturing to me, uh, whether I was a young kid, a teenager, a young adult, or, you know, before his uh, untimely death um, as, a, as an older adult in my 40s and uh god i love him and uh instilled so m many values in me and uh, more importantly he taught me to critically think and, and this is what i'm getting at um uh, let's go to the why why did president obama say these things and with president obama Everything is intentional. And um, if you didn't hear everything uh, correctly, I sped up the, um, 
the video so that we can get this in and save a little time. Uh, so, but you can go to ABC, you can just Google it on YouTube um, and go to ABC and type in Obama speech to uh, black men. But uh, Obama does things intentionally. What he said to the larger crowd at the campaign stop in Pennsylvania to the crowd there at the headquarters, Obama along with Magic Johnson, along with other men and black men who early on in the campaign for Kamala Harris jumped on and say, hey, black men, men, fall in line. This is all intentional. And more intentional than what you think. And this is where I get more into the why this is happening and into the behavioral science of campaigns. What Obama is trying to do, what the campaign is trying to do, and they're professionals at this, is get certain demographics to go to their default choice. Okay? It's called the default effect. And the default effect is a behavioral science concept that describes how people tend to accept the default option when given a choice. This happens because people, individuals are generally inclined to stick with the status quo and avoid making changes. The default effect can be powerful It can be a very powerful political tool for influencing voter behavior as it provides a mental shortcut and signals what's expected in a given situation. Now, here's a caveat. However, it can be difficult for voters to break free from the default effect and choose their own path. So, understand that. It can be difficult for voters to break free from the default effect and choose their own path. Choose their own path. We'll talk about that a little bit later. All the detractors to what Obama said, what Magic Johnson said, and so forth and so on. But what the Harris campaign and what... President Obama intentionally wants to relate to black men. He said, hey, we've been down this road before. We need to go down this road. We are traditionally Democrat voters. We are Democratic Party voters. Vote blue no matter who. Do your job. Get in line and vote from Kamala Harris all the way down the dog catcher, you vote Democrat. Now, to the reactions, and I've taken some time to let this sink in, to try to remove my feelings out of what Obama said. And my first initial reaction was like many, you know, commentators and pundits and influencers are saying, you you can't tell me what to do. This is, you know, this is racism. (laughs) So I sat back. I've even turned off the TV, turned off the streaming, turned off the radio, turned off any commentary that I saw come up on my feed that was reactionary in the way that, you know, we kind of expected, you know, you can't tell me what to do. Turn it off. I gave my time, gave myself time to, to think about this, to understand why this is happening. And again, Things happen for a reason on campaigns, especially when you run a very well-organized strategy. 
and Obama's strategy is getting the Dems to focus on a demographic that they're losing to the Republicans in general, Donald J. Trump specifically. I did some research very quickly just before Obama's comments. And I looked at the 2016 election. That was Hillary Clinton versus Donald J. Trump. And I saw that the black community did not turn out as well as it could have, nearing around 50%. And at that time we saw, it was, it was, it was more pronounced then because of course, everyone was on the Obama train, you know? However, when we saw those results come in, we saw that black voters underperformed Turnout, again, was around 50% for that particular election. And black men were trending more Republican. Not a lot. However, something for Democrats to take notice. And we're seeing this trend of a demographic that traditionally Democrats have relied on. So the Democrats needed to address this because, again, I, the only poll that matters is the one on Election Day. You go into a campaign, regardless of who you are, the incumbent, the challenger, whatever, you go into a campaign thinking, I'm losing, okay, period, and you go after your votes. But the Democrats and Republicans and the consultants, they are going to look at their polls and, you know, they're going to gather whatever information they can to ascertain what direction their strategy will go in. That's just bad. You just go after your votes, period. But that's a different story. And this is where the psychology of politics come into play. You go after your votes and you use the techniques that work. And the default effect applies here. Obama is... <laughs> the father figure of the Democrats. And he speaks in a fatherly tone. Yes, it was a lecture. Yes, he was telling us the importance as black men to vote for Kamala Harris. Again, he reminds me of my dad. He does. And I took notice. I, I did. It's not that, you know, I'm voting for Kamala Harris or Donald J. Trump. I'm, I'm one of those folks who probably wait till the last minute and vote and make my choices. However, it's not about me. Obama laid into, without saying it directly, the history of black voters supporting the Democratic ticket. Now, the reactions are warranted. Very emotional reactions. And you, you, we were bound to get that. Uh, again, you know, um, a, a, lot of, a lot of the reactions that I saw before I just shut down <laughs> all the streaming services, the TV, the radio, everything, were... were, were um, Emotional, um, some with personal attacks on President Obama. Um, they, they were all over the place. And um, I know that, you know, the campaign expected that type of reaction. But on the flip side, in my case, and I'm sure there are many other black men who are either one, undecided at this point, or two, voting to support Donald J. Trump gave pause after listening to Obama and thought about 
the choice that they've already made if they voted early, vote by mail, or the choice that they will make. I'm a professional in, in this political space. And so if, if I gave pause, then, you know, I would think the average voter listening to what Obama said also gave pause. So the, 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 the reactions are warranted and expected. And it's um, the Democrats, the Kamala Harris campaign, and particularly President Obama's wish, their hope, is that a democrat uh, a, a demographic that was once loyal is that emotion loyal to the party will face the challenge will come back to the party after this lecture and support Kamala Harris for president. Now, again, this comes on the heels of a lot of polling that the two parties have done in the swing states, nationally, so forth and so on, showing that, you know, Kamala Harris is not polling as well as say Obama, and he said that, <laughs> you know, she's just not a charismatic candidate. Um, people are concerned about her policies. Uh, people are concerned about her leadership abilities, so forth and so on. But there are dissuaded voters who just aren't connecting with neither the Democratic Party or the Republican Party. And part of that is causing this particular election cycle to be such a tight race. This also comes on the heels of the recent poll by the national, uh, the NAACP. Uh, and that poll I discuss in another uh, podcast, um, another episode of the David Washington Show, um, was the poll stating that one in four young black men have left the Democratic Party and will vote for Donald J. Trump. And boy, did we get a lot of comment in regards to that. And uh, all of my personally, you know, responded to and, you know, try to put things in the proper perspective from my point of view and have a tactful, respectful conversation. Democrats are, are, are understanding that they need to have more votes on the margins in order to win the presidency. They have to understand Kamala Harris is slipping in the swing state polls since they rely so heavily on the swing state polling. They know that whatever it is, the candidate, the message, the policies, whatever, it's just not it's just it's, it's just not having the effect, the desired effect of people coming out in the polls supporting the vice president. They're also understanding that abortion is not the primary issue here. Sure, it, it will bring out the, the, the core constituency for the Democrats, women. However, you need more than just women to win this. And for many, and I discussed this in an, another episode of a volunteer knocking on my door to discuss with me about the Florida amendment to the constitution in support of abortion and the back and forth conversation we had about that particular amendment. For many, many voters, the economy is the main issue, period, above everything else. 
how are they going to take care of their finances? How are they going to take care of their families? How are they going to put gas in the car, food on the table? Basic kitchen table issues. The economy. Also, Democrats should understand that Kamala Harris is not sealing the deal as the candidate to vote for. Listen correctly. The candidate to vote for. You just cannot tell people, oh, don't vote for Donald Trump because he's an existential threat to democracy. It's got to be more than that. You give a person, a voter, your constituencies, a reason to vote for you and demonizing Donald J. Trump, regardless of how the Democrats may feel about him or think about him, there is an entire <laughs> demographic and a very large one that support Donald Trump as the next president of the United States. Kamala Harris is not giving people a reason to vote for her. Period. Not a compelling case. Also, one of the things that, and I touch upon this a little bit, and I just want to emphasize that Kamala Harris is looking at polling numbers among her targeted demographics that are actually lower than 2016 when Secretary Hillary Clinton ran against candidate Donald J. Trump. She is just not reaching the enthusiastic numbers. Of course, definitely not like Donald Trump. I'm sorry, not like, uh, hey, that's another thing. Yeah, Donald Trump is a cult of personality. You're not Donald Trump, Kamala. But, but back to just the Democrats. She's not getting the, the, the enthusiasm of the electorate like Barack Obama, candidate Barack Obama, or even President Barack Obama. He, she is not getting the enthusiasm like Secretary Hillary Clinton. It's not there. It's not, it's, it's not there. I've looked at the numbers. It's just not there. One of the problems I have with this particular campaign, and this I lay at the feet of the Democrats, is that this campaign strategy for Vice President Harris is poll driven. Probably because it's just a very short amount of time that uh, this campaign has been in existence. That's on the Democrats. You should have stuck with Biden. I've always said that. I've always said that Biden was going to win re-election. But, you know, what do I know? I just do this stuff 24-7. But the poll-driven strategy sucks. It just sucks. Like I stated earlier, candidates, consultants, go into a campaign thinking you're always losing. Just do the work. Meet your your voters, where they're at, on their front porches, on their devices. Stick to a proven strategy. Organize your campaigns accordingly. And one more thing that's troubling for supporters of Kamala Harris, particularly the donors, the big donors, and the consultants involved with her campaign. Fundraising is down. Yes, she is the billion dollar candidate. That's true, that's true. However, fundraising is down. And that's a problem. It is trending downward. Money talks. And with 20 odd days left until the election, with vote by mail already started, Early voting to start here in Florida, at least in a week. Money talks. And fundraising tells you how much enthusiasm, how much support people with the money have for a candidate or not. 
so again, you know, uh, Vice President Harris does not have the charisma. Not she don't have the Obama level charisma. Period. Um, polling is lower than when Secretary Clinton ran against candidate Trump. One of the things that I'm seeing more and more publicly discussed is that for men in general, for men in general, they seem left out of the Democratic agenda. They see Democrats favoring women in the LGBTQ community over everyone else, including men. Hey, <laughs> Obama doesn't know me. Harris doesn't know me. Walls doesn't know me. The uh, DNC doesn't know me. The FDP, Florida Democratic Party, doesn't know me. The Orange County Democrats, they know me, but they don't know me. And I see it at my level. Black men like me, we don't exist. Black, Democratic men like me, we don't exist in a Democratic Party. Kamala Harris's economic plan, which I've read, and you got to look at it for yourself. Download it. I have. Look at it. Look at it for yourself. And 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 hopefully they did not change it, revise it, because as I was going through it initially, you see the pictures. And I'm like, damn, something's missing in the pictures. Talk about optics, and this is so important. Not one man, not one black man, not one man was pictured in the photos, unless you take, you know, you got to take walls out of, out of the equation here. But not one man was pictured in the economic plan and its graphics showing the candidates, Walls and Harris, talking to because my political firm works with good people with great ideas representing their communities regardless of their political affiliation democrats feel that oh you know he talks to republicans we can't talk to him and republicans are sometimes the same but damn When I go through the socials, when I go through the website, when I see the same faces of my local Democratic Party, what I'm hearing and seeing of late being discussed that the Democrats favor women in the LGBTQ plus community over men in general is factual. The evidence does not lie. So, in closing, I just want to say uh, thank you for uh, listening to this and uh, and watching. Um, Democrats at this point, they've got some problems. They've got some serious problems, and you have a you have to have a strategy that's more than just hope. You have to have a strategy that touches the priorities of everyone. You know, the proposals personally of Kamala Harris right now, especially especially the economic proposals, really don't don't do anything for my personal situation as a fifty three year old black man here in Florida there's nothing that immediately affects me I have a concern about that Kamala Harris recently said that there's nothing that she would change in regards to the Biden Harris administration that could have been a fatal flaw to her campaign 
for a candidate who talks about being the change agent, that's a big concern. As far as Father Obama, <laughs> I say that lovingly. It's good to see him back on the campaign trail. Um, it's good to see Magic jo uh, Johnson out there, you know, and these other, you know, black male voices. And I get it. The default effect is in play here. They want us to go back to what we were comfortable with. Go back to our default option as black men and support Kamala Harris because they know that the campaign's in jeopardy. I still predict a Kamala Harris victory on election day. I'll stick to my guns, but it's not going to be easy. It's just not. And um, for us to be effective as consultants, we've got to understand these different uh, concepts like the default effect. It's real. It's very real. And I strongly believe that Magic Johnson's recent speech to black men, President Obama's recent speech to black men that has caused so much reaction, good and bad, harkens back to black men in their mind going to that default choice of voting Democratic, of voting for Kamala Harris president. We'll see what the effect is. But I want to thank you all for being a part of this podcast, being a part of this particular episode. Please check out my episode about one in four. I believe that was on you can't make this shit up. Yes, it was. It was on that podcast, the episode one in four young black men supporting Trump. That caused a whole bunch of uh, uh, controversy. Not, not necessarily controversy, but conversation that I really enjoyed. And I'll put a link to that episode uh, here uh, in the show description. And uh, I will link this episode to that episode and the show notes there and also in the comments so that we can continue the conversation so hey um agree or disagree with what i said please let's have that conversation let's have an intelligent peaceful tactful conversation um i love what i do and uh i i, I want to have that respectful communication with you join our community please like, share, and comment. Like I said, I really love the comments. And subscribe. Grow our community. Ubuntu. Okay? Thank you for being a part of the David Washington Show. And we will see you the next time. All right. Let's go.